of God, if they're really seeking understanding, Father God, we know that the door will be open unto them. May we understand this text in a way that we've never seen it before, what we're talking about today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we pray that Cornerstone just continues to uh, move into the direction of being the church of destiny that you've called us to become. We thank you for every soul that is here, every soul that is watching those who are on their way and don't even know it yet, God. We're praying for them, God. Oh, Lord, we love you. I've studied. I need your strength, prepared, need your power. Lord, I'm ready and willing, but only you can make me able. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. In Jesus' name I pray. All God's children said, amen. Y'all give God some praise in his house. Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, amen, Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7. If you found it, please stand to your feet and praise God for the seasons that are changing, amen. We're going from, going from hot to cold, amen. I don't mind, I don't mind. I'm not a cold weather person, but I praise God for seasons. And as a police officer, we used to say, and some of you guys are chuckle, I used to tell the fellas, you better keep the peace if your name ain't on the lease about to be that season. Who you calling us because you can't act right? Amen. This is the season of yes, ma'am. Yes, darling. Yes. I'll be home 8.30, quarter nine, latest. That's that season. Amen. Luke chapter 7, if you found it. Luke chapter 7. <laughs> I'm just trying to help these young boys. That's all. They be out here struggling. They be out here struggling. Luke chapter 7. <laughs> Luke chapter 7, uh, if I receive this word with my mind only, it will be dead for me. But if I receive this word with the spirit over my mind, it will be life for me. And when your kingdom becomes my priority, its impact will be my reality. Lord, I don't need religious form or fashion. I need life. Look at somebody and say, receive life. Look at somebody else and say, receive life. Look at me and say, receive life. Luke chapter 7, Dietrich Haddon over there. Luke chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 10 in the King James Version, it says this. Uh, now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he, has, uh, that he was worthy for whom uh, he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he saw, and when he saw he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to find him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I'm not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. I wasn't worthy. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning, and this is, I just want to teach you something this morning. I want to talk about the seven kinds of faith. The seven kinds. You might want to get your pen and paper out. All right? The 
sitting at home, or whatever the case may be, get your notes out. The seven kinds of faith. This will change your life. I know we're down at the Judah gates and we're talking about praising God, inhabiting the praises of his people. And I keep telling you, you can come down to the Judah gate all you want and give God some praise, but God still requires holiness. God still requires that you make an attempt to live a life worthy of your calling. In other words, if God shows you something that is offending him, it's up to you to repent. Repent, confess my sins. Repent means to turn away from a course that I was once pursuing. And so I'm at this Judah gate, and I have repented. I've confessed my sins. I'm praising God. Now, in, in, in order for certain things to come to pass and strongholds to come down, you have to have faith. Somebody say faith. And there are seven kinds of faith. The first kind of faith mentioned in the Bible is great faith. Say it with me, great faith. It's the story of the centurion who came to Jesus and he said to Jesus, Lord, my servant lies at home paralyzed and he's suffering terribly. And Jesus said, well, I will go and heal him. And the centurion, you read the text, no, Lord, no, I, I'm not even, I wasn't worthy to come to you. I'm not worthy to have you in my house. Now, this guy's not even a Hebrew, okay? He's not even one of them. He's a, he's a, 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 a Roman centurion. A centurion means that he is in command over a hundred men. All right? And he says, no, Lord, I have authority over a hundred Roman sword, uh, soldiers, hence the word centurion. But I recognize that you have authority in heaven and earth. Now, I have authority over the soldiers, but I recognize that you have authority in heaven and earth. So, and he says, if you'll just speak the word. Now, now this is a word for word out of the Bible. I read it to you. He says, if you speak the word my servant will be healed. He said to Christ, you have authority in heaven and earth. And we talked about standing in the courtroom of God. We talk about uh, uh, saying God's words back to him. And you must recognize who God is, who Christ is, the centurion did. He said, you don't even need to come to my house, but if you just say the word, he will be healed. And Jesus stops, and he turns around to those who have been following him. He says, I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel. I'm here with my people. You remember the word. He coming to his own and his own receives him not. He, I'm coming to my people. This man is not even a Hebrew. I have not seen this kind of great faith in all of Israel. And it came from a Roman soldier. Great faith is this, Cornerstone. Great faith was saying, Lord, you have authority over sickness and disease. That's what great faith says. His great faith was saying, you have the authority over death, hell, and the grave. You have the authority over demon spirits. You have authority over winds and waves. The Lord Jesus Christ, Cornerstone, has authority over fear and doubt that haunt you. He has authority over that. He has authority over kings and over presidents, over governors, over Congress, over Senate. Somebody ought to be praising God. He has authority over that. He has authority, and nothing is impossible with God. Saints of God, God is waiting for you to speak the word of great faith to speak it boldly, to speak it specifically in my life. What is that thing? Say what you want when you want it. Say to God, God, you have authority over the altar of poverty in my life. Oh, somebody missed it. God, you have authority over the, over, over the altar of depression and anxiety and, and laziness. God, you have authority over the thing that haunts me. Lord, if you just say a word, I'll be healed. You, you, you have to understand, you have to say what you want, when you want it, when you want it. For, you're at the Judah gate, for goodness sake. You're at the Judah gate praising God. Just don't come down to the Judah gate and praise God and forget to tell him what you want. Y'all remember that old gospel song, Call Him Up? And tell him what you want, want. We used to get off that song. Y'all remember that song? Huh? Sharon know what I'm talking about. Call him up 
and tell him what you want. Here you are at the Judy gate. He says, come boldly into the courtroom. Come boldly and tell him what you want. Give God some praise and glory in his house. Great faith can pray from a great distance too. Uh, you, you, you can pray for somebody across town or on the other side of the world when you've got great faith. Uh, a faith is the victory that overcomes the world. That means it travels. Uh, a faith is the currency of heaven. That means it has value. Amen. Faith sees the invisible. Faith conquers the impossible. Faith is the voice that sings in the darkness waiting for the glorious dawn of a new day. Have faith in God. That's God's request. As a matter of fact, he says, you cannot please me until you have faith in me. Have faith, say it with me, have faith in God. Oh, y'all said it like you ain't got no faith. Say it with me, have faith in God. Say it again, have faith in God. Give God some praise. Now you got to stop, you got to stop being all, all sheepish. Got to have great faith. Great faith. His servant was dying. I got to go to the next thing of faith, but the, the, the first example of faith was great faith. But look at the centurion. It must have been a servant he cared about, right? He wouldn't have sent, he wouldn't have troubled people to go get Jesus if it wasn't somebody he cared about. They were dying, dying, right? And he says, go get Jesus. He had great faith. Some of you got some things that are dying in your life that you need resuscitated, then you better go. You better go get Jesus. See, when you have faith, great. When you have great faith, your faith is aggressive. I know, I know, I know. This is this is 2022, about to be 23. Nobody, you don't be so aggressive. No, 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 no. I need my faith to be aggressive. All right, I need, I need my faith to kick in the door, wave in the 4-4. I need my faith aggressive. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all went right over your head. But I need my faith aggressive. They'll tell you, don't be so aggressive. Be passive. You know, they, they want to emasculate men and males and don't be like that. Don't be loud. No, faith must be aggressive. It has to be aggressive. See, here's the problem. When you settle for second best, you don't have aggressive faith. Great faith is determined. Aggressive faith is determined. That means I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep doing what has been prescribed for me to do, knowing all along that, guess what? God is going to work it out on my, for my favor. Amen? He's going to work it out in my favor. I'm determined. I have an aggressive, great faith. The three Hebrew children, y'all remember the story? They were before Nebuchadnezzar, and they had a huge statue that had been built, and they were all told to bow down and worship the statue. Everybody, everybody's doing it. Your fellow Hebrews, there are other, other Christians, other Hebrews doing it, but they had a word from God, and those three said, I don't care what anybody else is doing. We ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. You doing it now. You doing it now. You know, and that's why it's important to be around people headed in the same direction. Huh? You ever look to one of your boys and like that? I'm sure one of them could have went either way, but he probably said, well, since the two of y'all ain't doing it, I ain't going to do it either. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to be around the right people, right? And so they refused to bow down and worship a statue. And the three Hebrew boys, they recognized God. Jehovah God as the only God, right? And they looked at the world's most powerful man, Nebuchadnezzar at the time. He was the most powerful man in the world. He had a huge blazing furnace going that had already singed people who had started the fire. And they looked him in the eye and they said, oh king, you're the king here. But our God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of your hand. Now, whether he delivers us out of your hand through the fire or whether he delivers us out of your hand so that we don't go in the fire, that's completely up to him. But he's able to do it. And so our faith, which is aggressive, is saying, I will not bow down to what you called me to do because it's against the Jehovah God of my life. Give God some praise. Now, my question is, 
How many of you are making concessions for things that you know God isn't pleased with? And then you at the Judah gate lifting up your name in praise. They say, well, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You're still actively involved or you're going along with something that I pointed out to you to get rid of. I pointed out to you to make adjustment. So don't come down to the gate praising my name when you ain't made the adjustments yet. Thank you for the praise, but evidently you don't really believe that, that you can make it without that thing I'm snatching from you. Oh, I wish I was a better preacher. I wish I was a better preacher in this house today. He says, and so, so these, you got to have bold faith, bold faith, bold faith. That, that, that's bold faith. And they looked him in the eye and they said, King, listen, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. That's bold faith. The people, uh, even uh, people of America, even, even people who are in this church, some of us bow down to pagan gods, bow down to a pagan lifestyle, and God will not honor, as a matter of fact, God will destroy any, anything pagan. I don't know why you don't believe that. God is love. And I'm so glad that uh, 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 Deacon Waters and, and, and Deacon Mark read, that, read that, that, that line out of the book of Nahum. God is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. He said, I'm not tolerating that. I'm going to destroy any paganism. So here's our, conf our confession. What is your confession? Our confession is in God we trust, right? That's our confession. We confess it, but to live it, to live it is a bold statement about bold faith. Give God some praise in this house. First kind of faith, hope you wrote it down, was bold faith. Second kind of faith is natural faith. Now, natural faith, there's no scriptural text for natural faith because you all have it. Natural faith is when you're traveling and you get on an airplane, you have faith that the pilot knows the difference between Chicago and Cuba. Right? That's natural faith. Right? You have faith that he or she knows what they're doing. When you, when you vote for president of the United States, you have faith that he will honor the Constitution of the United States of America, right? The right to assemble, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, America. You, 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 that's a natural faith, right? That's a natural faith. Uh, uh, um, uh, you have natural faith. You have natural faith. You have faith that your doctor knows the difference between a, a tonsillectomy and a hysterectomy. Amen? Huh? You, you have faith that when they put you to sleep, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Huh? You have faith, right? You have faith in that. That's why if you got work on your right arm, before they put you to sleep, they mark your right arm. So that while you sleep, they ain't working on your left one. Right? So you have that. That's a natural faith. Now, that's a natural faith. You, you, you have faith, and that sounds like a lot, but th there's, a, there's lots of differences. You have faith in your lawyer. You have faith in your banker. You have faith in the insurance man. You, but, but why not have this kind of faith in God who never fails, who is ever-present? God is ever-present. God is almighty. God has never failed you. You can't find a person on planet Earth today that says God has failed them. And they really believe it. Yeah, you, you, you can't find, who, you know, God, who, the awesome power that you have, who do you think gave it to you? God has given it to you. Faith is the victory that overcomes every barrier that you're going to face. Have faith in God. Give God some praise in this house. I'm teaching you today. So you know what faith is. We talked about great faith, and you know natural faith, the third kind of faith. It's, it's the, third, the third kind of faith is a mustard seed faith. Mustard seed faith. We see that in Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus said unto them, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto the mountain, Be cast into yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Say that with me. And nothing shall be impossible to you. Say it like we mean it. Nothing shall be impossible to you, right? That's that mustard seed faith. Mustard seed faith uh, will mix with nothing, or, or put it this way, anything that mustard seed faith is placed in, it transforms the substance. All right, let me make this. See, you're looking at me kind of crazy. Think of a jalapeno pepper in the middle of some chili, right? It, one jalapeno pepper 
will change the entire chili, amen, without affecting anything else. Am I right about it? That's the same thing as mustard seed faith. See, now you got it. Mustard seed faith is small, but it's pure. When you put mustard seed faith into anything, it changes everything, all right? It's small, but God, Jesus says that mustard seed faith has the power to move mountains. He said it's tiny, but it's tiny, but it changes things. Little is much in the hand of God, isn't it? He said, just give me a little. When you have pure faith, God will do the impossible for you. Jesus said, listen, you worried about something? Listen, what can I look for? Get all that mustard seed faith and sprinkle that in there and watch what happened, right? Just a little mustard seed strength will, will change everything for you. So now a fourth kind of faith, fourth kind of faith is called a measure of faith. Y'all ain't tracking with me today, but write it down. I'm going to get to the shout. Don't worry about it. I'm trying to tell you. So, so see, this, this kind of faith that I'm giving you, so, like, when you get discouraged this week, you got to open up your spiritual cabinet and look for your spices. Uh, some of y'all going to have to use great faith this week. Some of y'all going to have to use natural faith. Some of y'all are going to have to use mustard seed faith. And then some of y'all are going to say, hmm, I think for this I just need a measure of faith. Let me tell you what a measure of faith is, right? A fourth kind of faith is a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3, this is what God, God gives a measure of faith to every believer. Everybody in here has a measure of faith, right? To every believer in Christ, shortly after you come to Christ, the prince of darkness will whisper in your ear, you don't have faith. That's a lie. The Bible says God has already given you a measure. He, he gave you something to start with, Preston. He gave you a measure of faith. You start here. He gave you a measure of faith. You prayed the prayer, the sinner's prayer, as an act of faith. You have a measure of faith right now, and it's up to you to take that measure of faith and read the word of God. It's up to you to take that measure of faith and listen to the word of God to increase your faith. A measure of faith only increases by listening and applying the word of God. Again, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, say it with me, by the word of God. So in other words, my faith increases by hearing. And by hearing what? By hearing foolishness? No. My faith increases by how much of the word of God I take in. Hmm. You ever take a little, um, um, only analogy I can think of is taking some bread, right? You take a crumb of bread, and it's, it's, it is what it is. But, like, the reason why you put it in gravy because it swells the bread. Am I right? I know, see, some of y'all know what exactly what I'm talking about. See, some of y'all think the gravy is just for flavor. No, sometimes I take that, that biscuit and I run around that gravy because it swells the bread up. Right? God has given you faith, that's the bread, and the word of God is the gravy. Somebody's, you got <laughs> so if I want to increase my faith, I got to run around in the gravy of the Word of God. And that's some good gravy. And then it increases my faith. You know, the reason why you sop up everything with the bread so that it stick with you, so that it swells up, so you ain't hungry an hour later. In the Word of God, your faith will grow as you apply and sop it up with the Word of God. The will of God, the Word of God are always in agreement because they're one and the same. Let me say it again. The will of God, the will of God for your life is found in the word of God. And the will of God and the will of, word, will of God and the word of God are always in agreement. Always in agreement. This is how you check yourself. You know, we as Christians, we love saying, the Lord led me to. Right? The Lord, the Holy Spirit. No, wait a minute. Before you say what you're about to say, does it line up with the Word of God? It, I'm, not, I'm not asking if it lines up with your belief. If you're going to blame something on the will of God, it best line up with the Word of God. 
Amen. How, you know, forgiveness is part of the word of God. Uh, humbling yourself before God is part of the word of God. Repentance is part of the word of God. Um, um, so, so the will of God and the word of God are always in agreement because they're one and the same. The question is, how much do you read your Bible? You've been given a measure of faith. If it's not increasing, it's because you're not getting enough word in your life. You might be getting some great songs. You might be getting some great TikTok. You might be going to a nice conference or a nice Bible study, whatever the case may be. But it comes by the studying of the word of God. How much word of God, if you're only getting it on Sunday, then your measure of faith is only growing on Sundays. You know, so how much word of God are you getting in your life? That determines, watch this, that determines the quality of your faith and the amount of your faith is determined by how much word of God you're receiving. All right? It determines the quality of I wish I had faith like that. Well, if you stay in the Word long enough, you will have faith like that. You know, I wish I had faith of our grandparents. Well, Grandma figured out the secret. She stayed in the Word. Amen? So if you're not, if your faith is not growing, if, if your faith is not growing, then, then that has everything to do with you and the amount of Word in your life. Don't say God is silent when your Bible is closed. Don't say God is silent when you have a closed Bible six days of the week. I ain't heard from the Lord. You ain't looking to hear from him. I can't say don't nobody call me and my phone turned off. How can I turn my, I turn my phone off and get mad when nobody called me? And you, we, we treat God the same way. We want to hear from him, but we got closed Bibles. Some of us don't even know where our Bibles are anymore. Yeah, you know what? Listen, there's a reason. And I, this is just me. This is not even in my text. This is just me. All right, don't be offended by what I do. Y'all should know by now. I'm going to say what I want to say. Um, I, I, I got 50 Bibles on my phone, like the rest of y'all, but I carry this. And the reason why I carry it is not for anybody else but me. It's not to say that I'm, I, I'm, I'm holy, I'm this and that. No, I, I, I need to feel the word, man. I need to, I need to oh, smell the pages. I, I need to look at what I got highlighted. I, I got to be in there. I got, when I'm going through it, I don't have time to check my phone because if I check my phone, I might fall down the rabbit hole of YouTube. I might fall down the rabbit hole of TikTok. I might fall down the rabbit hole of Instagram. I might fall down these other rabbit holes. But when I put that down and I grab this, I fall down the rabbit hole of Psalm 23. I fall down the rabbit hole of Psalm 150. I fall down the rabbit hole of Isaiah chapter 55. 55. But see, I fall down godly rabbit holes and my faith is increased. Why I can keep on keeping on. You got to learn how to use this word of God. If I'm a fall into anything, I'm a fall into what God said. Give God some praise in this house. Fifth kind of faith is called a faithless faith. Faithless faith. Y'all didn't think that was a kind of faith. Yes, it is. A faithless faith. John 20, 27. Then he turns to Thomas. Then he says to Thomas, extend your hand. Put your finger in my hands and be not faithless, but believing. Faithless faith, faithless faith is that faith which must see before it believes. I've been there. I mean, listen, don't act like you ain't been there. I've been there. I was a young Christian one time. You know, I need to see it first. People of, of faith say we believe and then we receive, but faithless people like doubting Thomas he said, I'm, I'm not going to believe it until I touch the scars in your hand. I'm not going to believe it until I see it for myself. There's some folks with a faithless faith that have to see it to believe it. They, they, they say seeing is believing. They are ruled by, by, by flesh. When you're there, you're still ruled by your flesh. And, the, and, and when you're there, you're never going to experience the power of God in your life Be when you're being ruled by your flesh. There are people 
who will drive thousands of miles to see a miracle when God is waiting to do a miracle right in your church, right? Uh, God is waiting to do a miracle right in your house if you were spiritual enough uh, 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 to, to even receive it from him, right? Listen, if you don't go to God's house, why do you think he going to come to your house? You don't spend time in God's house. You know what I want to invite you in? Well, I've been inviting you in. You don't show up in my house, but you want me to show up at your house. Now, what if God treated us like we treat other people or like we treat him? Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lord, have, or like we used to say, Lord, have mercy. They didn't even, even put the V on it. They didn't put the have, high, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us, Father. Thank you, God, for not treating me like I treat you. Lord, I've been inviting you to my house, to, to this and that, but, Lord, I haven't even gone to your house. Now, that's a faithless kind of faith. Sixth kind of faith, because I want to get through this, is uh, the sixth kind of faith is visible faith. Somebody say it with me, visible. Visible. Luke 5, 20 says, and when he saw their faith, he saw their faith. It was visible. Let me ask you this. Can God see your faith? If God's looking around this church right now, can he see your faith? Can he see it in what you say? Can he see your faith in what you do? Can he see your faith in where you go? Can he see your faith where you were even last night? Don't raise your hand, but can he see your faith? Can he see what you think, right? You know he can. Can he see your faith in what you think? Can, can, you, can, can he, yeah, he can, yeah, he can, he can. And so what, when God is looking for faith, when God is looking into your life, when God is looking into your thoughts, when God is reviewing your actions, does he see faith? What does he see? Does he see faith? I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question. Because he said, I saw. He said, the text says, when he saw their faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith unlocks the gates of heaven. You can't show up to the Judah gate without faith. You, 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 you can't show up. You can praise and worship. I told you on the outset of us going to these gates, this ain't no hocus pocus stuff. This ain't no, if I do that, God automatically going to do this. No, he still requires holiness, and you still got to show up a certain way. Amen? Listen, you could, if y'all had to go to court tomorrow, you wouldn't show up any old kind of way, would you? You show up dressed like something. Every, never mind, but stop. You're going to show up looking like something. Uh, you're going to have an advocate with you. At least go have your paperwork together, right? You at least go have your paperwork. You're going you to call Sister Jamie. That ain't her area of law, but you're going to call her anyway. She said, I don't do that kind of law, but I'll, I guess. I don't know, right? You're going to do whatever you got to do showing up in court, right? Yeah, right? But so, so how in the world do we just come to God any old kind of way? We can't just show up at the gates any old kind of way. We have to show up with praise, thanksgiving, and say it with me, a visible faith. The just shall live by faith. That's all of you. That's me. The just will live by faith. Every day of your life is a faith opportunity. You will have a chance today to live by faith. Every, and if you don't do it today, you got another chance tomorrow. Now, I don't know when you're going to run out of tomorrows, but I know that you have an opportunity today to live by faith. The seventh kind of faith and the final one. Somebody say, praise the Lord, you're almost done. The seventh kind of faith, and I hope you write this down, is a little faith. <laughs> seventh kind of faith is little faith. Matthew 6, 30. Oh, ye of little faith. You see, little faith can only accomplish little things. Little faith is always worried about little things. Uh, worry, uh, 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 little faith is always worried about something, right? L listen to Jesus' sermon on, on little faith and, and the things we worry about. Matthew 6, 28 through 30, he says this. He says, why, 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 why do you worry about clothing? 
Consider the lily of the field. Why are you worried about your fashion? Uh, yeah, that's a little thing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, right? Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field that is today and is burned up tomorrow, how much more will he clothe you, O oh you, of little faith. The point is, if the sparrow in the field, if they know, if the sparrow knows that God will provide for him, this tiny little bird knows. You never see a sparrow worrying? You ever see a bird uh, lose its feathers because they have anxiety? Huh? You ever see, I, I didn't see, you, you ever see that? I ain't seen nothing like that. You ever, you ever, you ever see all sparrows sitting around and one just What's wrong with him? He worried. I ain't never, <laughs> I ain't never seen a sparrow worried. If a sparrow doesn't worry, if this tiny little bird don't worry, why don't you believe that you are as important to God, even more so important to God, than the sparrow is? Because that's what you're saying when you are worried. When you are worried, you are saying, I'm not important to God. And that's a lie. Sparrows don't take Alka-Seltzer. Sparrows don't take nothing for their ulcerative colitis. They don't, they don't, they don't take nothing like that. Sparrows ain't got no drinking problem. They don't, uh, pa sparrows don't go see psychiatrists and lawyers. Sparrows ain't hooked to fentanyl. Sp sparrows ain't worried about, sparrows ain't at home arguing. Sparrows ain't, no, no. You know why? The Bible says they know there's a God in heaven that's taken care of them for thousands of years, and they're going to be still around until God comes. Somebody at the sound of my voice ought to say, if God has brought me this far, if God has brought me through 25 years, 30 years, listen, listen, the older you get, the more trust and faith you should have in God. Because if you're over 40, if God kept you for 40 years, what makes you think he ain't going to keep you the rest of the way? Give God some praise in this house. Ain't nobody in here looking bad. None of you. I don't know what you're worried about. Ain't nobody. All of y'all, you, you look fed. I was keeping like that. You look fed. We all fed. We all look fed. Right? Got on great clothes. You're smelling good. You're looking good. You're smiling. Right? I, I don't know what you're worried about. How dare you have a worry? How dare you be faithless? If God's carried you this far, he'll carry the rest of you. Give God some praise. And I, I, let, me, let me close with this. I gave you seven kinds of faith. Jesus conducted a faith seminar. Jesus conducted a, 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 a faith seminar in Matthew chapter 6. He conducted this faith seminar five times in Matthew chapter 6. You can see it for yourself. He says, take no thought. I, I know we have this spirit of anxiety in the world today that is being celebrated, right? We tell our kids, we make excuses for our kids. He's just a little bit anxious. He's just a little bit, man, listen. My mom never looked at my father and said he's just a little bit anxious. Like, I, I didn't even know what anxious was till about 10 years ago. I didn't even know, you know, I, I didn't, my mom didn't approach my dad and say, well, give him a break because he's a little bit depressed about something. No. Look, Ryan even laughing. <coughs> I used to act a fool, right? Now, listen, I'm not saying these things don't exist. I'm, matter of fact, I've said that we celebrated it so much that now these things do exist, right? I didn't have to take no pills or no medicine. I used to lock myself in the bathroom, right? Because I knew my dad was coming home about 430. So I locked myself in the bathroom. My dad knocked on that door. I knew I was about to get a whooping, Jose. And like, I'd be not, my dad knocked on the door, and I'd be like, I'm in the bathroom. He said, cut it short and get you behind out here. <laughs> it's a different time, a different time. A different, a different, a different time, a different time. But, but, but listen, what, what I want to say to you is Jesus says this over and over again. Don't worry. And I turned out all right. And listen, a little butt cooking every now and then ain't going to hurt you, a little boy. Ain't going to hurt him. He upstairs in his room and he upset. I wasn't allowed to be upset. 
You are not allowed to sit in 149 Linden Avenue, and my brother's watching it. You ain't sitting around a house that you didn't pay for, a house you ain't paying mortgage at. You ain't allowed to sit in here and sulk. Go out back with the dog and sulk in his house, but you ain't sulking in my house. When I come in here and I say hello, open up your mouth and somebody, you know what I'm saying, Dennis. You know what I'm saying. You know what, all y'all know what I'm saying. Anyhow, Jesus says over and over again, five times, take no thought. Jesus talking to believers, don't be anxious, don't worry. He says it five times. Oh, you of little faith, don't worry about your life. It's the Greek word called souk, S-U-K-E, talking about the physical earthly life. He says, stop worrying about it. It means stop worrying. Which he said, Jesus says, which of you, cornerstone? by worrying can add a cubit to your life. Which one of you by worrying can add a year to your life or a cubit to your stature? He's referring to the quality of your life. He says, tell me, which one of you can improve the quality of your life by worry? Matter of fact, stick your hands up right now if you can improve your life by worrying. You can't. And he says, cut it out. If I took care of sparrows, I'll take care of you. Give God some praise in this house. Huh? That Greek word for don't start worrying. Why, why? He says, why don't I have to worry, God? Why don't I have to worry, Jesus? He said, because when you're a believer, God is your father. God is your father. God is your father. God is your father. He is your provider. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is the Lord that is always there. You may not see him, but he's there. He's your healer. He's your defender. He's your rock. He's your fortress in the day of battle. He's your high tower. He's your shield and buckler. He's there when you need him. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Give God some praise in this house. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He's a God who's never failed. See, worry is just a sign of little faith. Worry is practicing atheism. That's what worry is. But when I worry, I'm doing just what the atheist does. Worry, worry proves that I don't believe that God can take care of me. Worry is, 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 is I, I, I have faith in fear, not faith in God. We serve a great God who's never failed. Matter of fact, in 1 Peter, it tells us to cast all my cares on him because he cares for you. Now, the word care in the text is a word for anxiety. Put all my anxiety on him because uh, anxiety means I'm being pulled in all kinds of different directions. That's what worry is, right? It'll pull you in all kinds of directions. But you have to constantly uh, 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 turn your mind to him. You have to, you, you, you got all kinds of stuff on your mind. You got children on your mind. Your health is on your mind. Your house is on your mind. Your old age is on your mind. Your retirement is on your mind. Your strength is on your mind. Your brother is on your mind. Your grandchildren are on your mind. Your trials are on your mind. How am I going to get this paid? How am I going to get that taken care of? How am I going to get that situation worked out? Where is this thing ever going to turn around? What am I going to get my breakthrough God I see them over there they don't even go to church but they always seem to have new cars and new clothes every two years they got something new in the driveway and here I am I'm serving the Lord I got the same old beat down jalopy I got the same old car I, 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 I go to church anyhow you know why because maybe this Sunday is going to be the Sunday that God turns it all around for me Maybe it'll be this Sunday. And then you go back home and, and, and you're pulled in, in, in all kinds of different directions. But here's what I want you to do, Cornerstone. I'm done. Cast your cares on him. I said all your cares on him. That's your word. Cast your cares means to place, uh, to put your, your, your cares in prayer and give it to him. Remember when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, he was riding on the back of that donkey, and they took their garments, right, and they put the, put the, put the uh, garments on the donkey, and some of them threw them on the road, and Jesus triumphantly rode on them. That's what casting your cares means. It means to put it on Jesus and let Jesus triumphant, uh, be, be triumphant over all your cares. You got to put your cares on King Jesus. 
Jesus and let him ride over all your cares. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on. No man can hinder you. So I'm going to give you all my cares, Lord. And Jesus, I want you. Now here's the shout. Here's the shout in the text. Here's the shout. Here's the shout. Here's the shout. You know, uh, uh, all of these, you can pull in all these directions. Because you got every worry that you can possibly worry about, you can possibly imagine. But here's the shout in the text. With all these cares that you can number, um, God has just one care. You have a bunch of cares that you can number. Re re listen, listen, listen. You got all these cares. You got all, with all the cares you have, you just think about all the cares you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I could put them on a piece of paper, right? <coughs> and... And, and God has just one care. God just cares about one thing. Here it is, you. You missed your shout. He cares about one thing, you. That's all he cares about. That's, what he, that's who he's looking out for. That's who he's going to take care of. He, you know, he says, come on up and take a selfie with me because I'm going to take care of you. God cares and God cares. The old folks used to say, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share as we travel there, no other has ever known. I know he's all right. Give God some praise. I know he's all right. He cares for you. He Listen, if you, ain't nobody else going to hug you. Stand up and hug yourself and say, God. He cares for me. You ain't got to hug me because I hug myself knowing that God cares for me. He cares for you. He cares for you. Give God some praise in this house. I'm done. I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to recite this prayer after me. I want you to recite this prayer. And recite it with authority. Our most gracious heavenly Father. I approach your throne in the name of Jesus Christ. Asking for the peace of God to flood my heart and my mind today. Do not allow the thoughts of tomorrow to destroy my peace today. For your word declares Take no thought for tomorrow. For sufficient unto the day is the trouble thereof. Casting every care upon him. For he careth for you. The eternal God is my refuge. And underneath are his everlasting arms. He will drive out my enemies before me. And God shall say, destroy them. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Today I release my faith to receive the peace and comfort of God. I am casting all my care on you because you care for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God some praise in this house. <laughs> there are seven kinds of faith. If you desire prayer, won't you come forward? There are seven kinds of faith. And you cannot please God without faith. 